Hi everyone, in this video we are going to talk about a very exciting topic, generative AI. I believe you definitely heard this term many more times, especially during the last two years. So what exactly is generative AI? Let's take it word by word. So generative, it means you are creating a new content, like text, like audio, like video, or even like code. And then AI or artificial intelligence, I have a computer doing this for me. So let's go and dive deep where exactly Gen AI is and how does it differ from machine learning or deep learning. So let's start by the first one and let's explain this term here called AI. So AI or artificial intelligence, this is where I have a computer and I want a computer to mimic or to imitate a human behavior. And in the AI, this is where it is something like it's static, which means I give my AI if then rules. So I'm telling my computer, if you have seen this, take this action. If you have seen this, for example, take another action. So you might think about in the AI, this is where we call it, this is a rule based. So very simply, you can think about it like an email filtering system. So for example, I can say, I have a rule. If I received an email with this topic, for example, move this email to this folder. If I received another email, maybe from this sender, move this email, for example, to another folder. And this is very simply what AI is. Now, the second one, and you can think about it as a subfield of AI, and this is what we call machine learning. And in machine learning, this is a bit different than AI. It's not as static as AI. In machine learning, this is where I feed my model data, and we're going to see the options here, because I want my model to do a certain task, and I need my model to enhance or to be better over time with experience. So in machine learning, and we can have three options of machine learning, this is where we have supervised learning, or unsupervised learning, or reinforcement learning. What exactly is the difference between the three? In the supervised learning, this is where I feed my machine learning model what we call labeled data. And in the supervised, this can help me solve two main use cases of machine learning. And this is what we call a regression use case. And in regression, for example, this is where you want to predict a certain number. So for example, I want to predict what will be the stock price. I want to predict what will be the price of a house or of a unit. How can I do it? I need to feed my model, my labeled data. So for example, the history of the price of this stock, for example, or uh, a lots of data about multiple units in different locations with different sizes. And accordingly, based on this, my machine learning model can predict what will be the price of the stock or the price of a certain unit, for example. The second use case I can solve with the supervised machine learning model is what we call classification. And in classification, this means I want to classify. When I receive an email, is it spam or not spam? I want to classify when I do a credit card transaction, is it spam or not spam? And that's very simply supervised. A little bit different in the unsupervised, I don't give a labeled data. In the unsupervised, I feed the model with unlabeled data, and this is where my model will do what we call clustering. So here, the model will try to come by itself. What exactly are the differences between all the data that you are trying to feed me? And then, the last one is the reinforcement learning, and this is very simply when I try to teach the model by trial and error. So I am leaving the model to take decisions. And every time the model is taking a correct decision, I give some rewards, think about it maybe as points. And every time the model is taking a wrong decision, I am doing a penalty, which means maybe deducting some points from the model, for example. And this is reinforcement learning. 
Now, the third type is what we call deep learning. And again, you can think about deep learning as a subset of machine learning. And deep learning is very interesting because in deep learning, this is where we try to imitate the human brain. And don't be surprised, deep learning is not something new. Deep learning has been there since 1940s, where we have two scientists, Warren McClock and Walter Pitts. They thought about this idea. You know what? Now, the way God created our brains, in our brains we have what we call neurons. And then, using these neurons, we take all of the decisions that we do. And then, they thought about something. Let's try to imitate these neurons that we have in our brains. Let's try to imitate it in a mathematical and a software representation. In our brains, we have billions of neurons. We have around 86 billion neurons. And please don't tell me why do we have it 86, why it's not 87 or 85. That's the average number of neurons we have in our brain. And in our deep learning, these two scientists, they're trying to imitate the neurons we have in the form of what we call neural networks. So they're trying to build a neural network like this. And these neural networks, they represent or they simulate how the neurons we have in our minds are talking together and in the deep learning this is where i feed my model huge amount of raw data so i try to feed my model huge amount of raw data and i try or my model now will try to understand what do i have something for example like object detection or something like facial recognition. So I feed my data, I feed my model lots of data, and then I leave it to my model now in order to understand or detect objects or do something like facial recognition. And now the final one, our topic for today, Gen AI. And you can think about that Gen AI is a subset of deep learning. And how Gen AI is special? In Gen AI, this is where I feed my model huge amount of data, vast amount of data. You can think about it like this. That's the complete internet data. All the data that we have, for example, over the internet. And then in the Gen AI, this is where I have a very complex neural network, actually in billions of parameters. So for example, for something like ChatGPT3, we have around 175 billion parameter. In something like ChatGPT4, we have in the range of 1 trillion parameter. So can you understand how these neural networks are very, very complex? So in the next one, let's see how the Gen AI models, which we're going to call it foundation models, and actually that's the name Stanford University gave it to the Gen AI, foundation models, how these models are different than the traditional machine learning models. So let's explore the differences between a traditional machine learning model and the foundation model, which is the secret behind Gen AI. In the traditional machine learning model, as we mentioned, I need to build a specific machine learning model for every use case and for every task. So for example, if I want to do text summarization, that's one machine learning model. If I want to do another Q&A, that's another machine learning model. Maybe if I want to build a chatbot, that's the third machine learning model. So how do I do it? I need to bring my data. Most of the cases, it's labeled data. I feed it into my machine learning model and then maybe I can do text summarization. I feed my labeled data to my machine learning model, maybe because I want to build Q&A. The same will be for the third model here, another model, for example, to build my chat bot. And that's the case with traditional machine learning models. Now, what's the case behind the foundation model? The difference is in foundation model, I bring my unlabeled data. And here, you need to think about it like this. This is 
lots and lots of data, vast amount of data. Think about it. That's the complete internet data. So simply what do we do? We crawl all the websites. We get all the text inside each and every page. And whenever I can see a link, we go to this link, crawl this other page and get all the text that I have in this page. And then I feed this data into my foundation model. If you remember with lots and lots of parameters and then now the same foundation model can be multitasking. So it can do for me text summarization. The same model can do Q and A. The same exact model can build a chatbot. The same exact model can generate code, for example. So this is the concept behind the foundation model. So let me quickly revise what we spoke about in this video. So in this video, we spoke about the differences between AI, machine learning, deep learning, and then Gen AI. And then here we spoke about the differences between the traditional machine learning model, where I used to have a specific model for every use case versus the foundation models where I feed lots and lots of data and the same model can do for me multitasking as we can see like this text summarization, Q and A, chatbot, code generation, songs generation, for example. I hope this is clear and I hope right now you get a very good understanding about what exactly is Gen AI and the technology behind Gen AI. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future video. Thank you so much for watching.